Number 19, unreasonable results. A gymnast doing a forward flip lands on the mat and exerts a 500 newton meter torque to slow her angular velocity to zero. Her initial angular velocity is 10 radians per second and her moment of inertia is 0.05 kilogram meter squared. Letter A, what time is required for her to exactly stop her spin? All right, so this is basically right rotational kinematics. We've been covering topics like this now for the past several questions. You can think about this in terms of, you know, your linear analogs if you like. It doesn't really um, matter, whatever you choose to do. Um, if we're asked to solve for time, okay, and we are given, uh, what do we have? We're given the initial angular velocity, so an initial velocity. We know that the final angular velocity is zero. We're asked for time, right? So we're given VI, VF, asked for T. What else do we need to know? Well, it sounds like we need to know an acceleration, right? In order for me to figure this out, I need to know an acceleration. Now, not a linear acceleration, right? But an angular acceleration. And all both of these values up here are omega, okay? So really I'm after, how do I find my angular acceleration? So, well, what does it tell me? Um, it doesn't tell that to me directly, but it does give me a torque in the problem and it also does give me uh, the gymnast moment of inertia. And therefore I can use this formula over here on the right-hand side to find the angular acceleration. It says that the sum of the torques is equal to the moment of inertia multiplied by angular acceleration. To solve for that angular acceleration, it'll simply be the sum of the torques over the moment of inertia. Now, let's leave this alone for right now because I'm gonna just do a substitution. Now what I need to do is I need to consider a formula that relates those four variables together. You can think about the linear kinematic analogs. However, though, this is fairly straightforward. It'll be the final angular velocity is equal to the initial angular velocity plus the angular acceleration times time. That should look very similar to VF is equal to VI plus AT. So now all I need to do here, if I want to solve for time, just do some algebra where it tells me that the time will be equal to the final angular velocity minus the initial angular velocity all over the angular acceleration. Now, what do you think we're going to do? Take this term and substitute it on in for the angular acceleration. So now my new formula becomes T is equal to omega F minus omega I all over the sum of the torques divided by the moment of inertia. And voila, here's the formula. You got everything you need. Just plug it on in. So torque here will be zero. That's the final angular velocity minus the initial. They told us it was 10 radians per second divided then by, oops, divided then by the torque. They said it was 500 Newton meter divided by then the moment of inertia of 0.05 uh, kilogram meter squared. So time is simply take out the calculator. Let's calculate. Uh, and by the way, the, uh, you know, if you look at the signs in here, it's going to turn out to be a negative, you know, we can't have negative time. You can just take the absolute value or you can just plug in that negative sign for the torque. Since it's a stopping torque, we don't know which way she's rotating and that might change the dynamic, but you, you got to have this answer come out to be positive. So in any case, uh, don't overthink it. So 10 divided by then 500 divided by 0 0.05. And we get a value of 0. Point, uh, yeah, so we get a value of 0 0.001. So 0 0.001, and that is in terms of seconds. Okay. And that sounds good. So that is the time. Now it says, what do we have here? It says that, um, then, sorry, part B, it says, what is unreasonable about this result? Well, do you think it took her one millisecond? I mean, that's what this is. This is one millisecond. Uh, I, I doubt it, all right? That would that would be kind of insane. Um, if you were to actually calculate the angular velocity here, it's really, really high, okay? So uh, no, that's it's that's what's unreasonable. And what pro what is the unreasonable part? Most likely the moment of inertia. This is quite low, okay? Even if you approximate you know, her body is a rod rotating around and you look at that formula of MR squared, um, you know, although if, even if you take it as just a disc rotating, it doesn't, whatever. Uh, MR squared over two, you're gonna notice that, uh, you know, given the mass and the length, you're not gonna come up with a value of, of 0.05, okay? So that would be the unreasonable uh, premise. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next question. Take care.